Hello, City Skylines fans. I'm Socks Way Up, and welcome back to another episode of Lake Sockside. Today, we're going to be looking at the happiness, well, the overall happiness of the city, specifically in some of our commercial areas. They are lacking employees. Let's take a deep dive into the statistics of the city. You can see the population is relatively low for the amount of jobs we have available. We're at about 7,000 citizens. You can see 3,300 of them are employed, which is relatively low compared to the amount of jobs we have available. Way too many jobs right now for the amount of people in the city that can work, which still shows the unemployment at 3%, which is misleading because a lot of the buildings, the office buildings, the commercial buildings don't have enough employees. So they're unhappy and they need more employees. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to jump on in, kind of get a little old school socks way up here. We're going to start building out another residential area because we need employees. So there's a lot of other things that we're going to have to do to fix the issues. And we're going to be going over that probably in the next few episodes to finally get the, the, the city to a place where all the happiness is where it should be. And I know a lot of people out there may find their city in a similar situation, and we're going to kind of go over how long it takes to recover it and get it. Well, recover it's I guess recover it is the right word, because you'll see here in a little bit our income is having issues as well because of it. People are unhappy. They're moving out. They're moving in. The population was fluctuating kind of crazy. Um, and so was the uh, the budget. The budget was being affected by this as well. Right now we're in the positives, but it does drop down into the negatives. And we we finally stabilized that. We talked about that a few episodes ago and we, we grew the city when we did the downtown area and got the balance way out of whack. So we're fixing that, we're doing that now. And, and I think that is the key element that some people do or the, the key mistake that a lot of people do when they get their cities in this position is they go for the high density way too early even though it's unlocked for them. The city's not necessarily ready for it, especially when it comes to the highly educated individuals. If you don't have enough of those, you probably don't need the office complexes yet even though they look nice. They're, they're very stimulating to the eye, nice addition to your cities that you want. Um, but the timing of it is important as we'll see later on in this video we'll kind of explain a little bit why we're still not where we need to be and why it's going to take a few episodes to get exactly where we want so right now we're allowing the new subdivision to grow and expand and get populated we're going to keep building we're going to keep expanding there was a lot of jobs a lot of individuals and citizens missing to fill the available jobs so major expansion this episode if we haven't already said that I believe by the end of the episode, our population doubles to around 12,000, where we're close to seven, so almost doubles. Uh, but yeah, you see here, we're adding in some more roads, some major arteries, I guess, to the downtown area. We talked about expanding the downtown area over here, and you'll see that we kind of did that and then transition into lower residential or regular residential. I forget exactly what the game calls it. Low, low residential versus high. Exactly. Um, but here you can see we're using the multi-tool. I'm going to put a link in the video to a nice... YouTube, another YouTube video of walking you through how to use it. You can see I'm struggling with it still. I need to watch that video again as well. So, but yeah, we're expanding this area. More residential is going to go in here. And I, at this point, started remembering the way I enjoyed City Skylines. Building out roads, letting it populate, picking and choosing what I want in certain areas. The detailing will come later. We will detail a little bit still in this series but it's not gonna be the main focus right now. We need to expand the city. We need to think about the city overall and the pace of, of Lake Sockside growing after 10 episodes, only 6,000 people. I, I wasn't very happy with that. And I think that's why I was struggling to even sit down and make these videos. So at this point, we are close to finishing the main roads for the residential area that we're adding here, and then we'll get to zoning next. But you can see I'm having I'm having fun with some angles. This is definitely not a grid. We, we don't build grids in our cities. When we start off, we do a little bit, and then we let the terrain, we let the existing freeways kind of dictate things, and you can see the roads. I like the design. I like the way it looks, especially when we get the, the, the boxes or the grids shut off here and it gets populated, as you'll see later on. I forgot how nice the cities can look without plopping and picking every single building yourself. In here, as we mentioned earlier, the budget is a mess. We're spending a lot of money and not making much. So 
So here we go zoning this area. You're gonna see here in a second where the transition from the skyscrapers to the regular housing happens. And we're going to continue the skyscrapers along the coast and keep a gap. And behind the skyscrapers are gonna be the low residential area, low density areas like we've done in the past on the other side. We're gonna kind of mimic it, but this side's gonna be a lot larger when it comes to the amount of low density housing that we have. You can see there we're adding in education in a little bit. We'll talk a bit, a bit about why we're doing that, but we're making sure we have a good balance of elementary schools, high schools to get our city where it needs to be education wise. And here's where we're going to add some of the high density residential. Also letting that kind of plop down itself. We also strip out a couple areas here that we're going to add some parking in eventually. I wanted to add a parking garage. We haven't done a lot of parking garages in this series, but I couldn't afford it at this point. So we talked to the budget committee and we went with the general or generic or main standard. That's the word, the standard parking garage there. I think it makes a nice mixture there. It gives people an area to park as well as walk to their house. And instead of just plopping down parking lots everywhere, like we have been doing, it mixes up the city a little bit as we're expanding here. And those houses are coming in nice. The demand is starting to go away. So we, we added here a couple more of the skyscrapers that we wanted in place here by the coast as we were just talking about. But then at this point, the game has to kind of cycle through for it to recognize that we still do need residents to fill the jobs. We might be getting close to the amount of people we need or that could be employed, but education isn't there yet. So we still need more residents that are at different levels of education to get the city where it needs to be. And you see right here, we're kind of taking a peek at the available schooling options to kind of give us an idea of where we're at. All the schools are full. So we had another uh, elementary school there. We need to get the capacity up. We need to get people cycled through. And unfortunately, when you're playing catch up like this, you got to let some years cycle in the game. You got to let people go to school. They got to go to elementary school. They can, then they got to go to high school and then they can get to university eventually. But that's what we're doing right now is we we kind of Got the residential where we need it for now, and as you can see, the demand is very low at the moment. So as we just mentioned, we have to wait for some cycles of the game to flow through or to, to play on. And so we start fixing some things that we've neglected in the past. I knew I needed to come back to this highway, so we're gonna fix the slope on it. I think bringing it down to ground level at this point is okay. It, it's getting closer to the bridge that is uh, that it's leading to. So getting it back to ground level, which is even with that bridge is nice. And we're putting a nice slope on it with the multi-tool, which again, we'll have a video linked in the, in the description for you guys to check that out. It's a relatively new mod to me. I've been away from the game for a while. I'm not sure how old it actually is, but I'm loving it so far and still need to learn some of the tricks of it. So here we're going to take a little deep dive into the update where we're at. You see the population's above 10,000. We've added about 1,500 or 1,200 jobs. Unemployment has increased because the population has increased, where jobs available have stayed steady. So you can see that is the progress that we're making. One of the things that doesn't show up on this chart and why I showed the other one is the levels of education that you see on the right. 53% of our citizens are unemployed or uneducated. So we need to get them educated so that they can fill the jobs that require education. Unfortunately, a lot of those jobs require highly educated. I don't want to get rid of those office complexes. So that's why we're doing this. That's why we're building this out and getting the city in a better state. It's going to take time though. And so here, even though we have a lot of jobs available and the unemployment is kind of out of control right now because of the level of people's education, I'm adding in a little bit of a commercial area. And what I'm doing here is trying to stimulate the growth of the city of the city to allow us to then add more residents. As you see, the demand for the residential area is pretty low right now. So even if we added another section, it would struggle to grow. So we're kind of trying to stimulate that to get the bar graph, the demand to kind of flip so that it will fill the houses when we build the next neighborhood. And then eventually as the game cycles, we get people into high school, we get people into college, which we're already starting to see more, more individuals going to the university, which is causing us to have more highly educated citizens. It's starting to come together. It's gonna to take time, as I mentioned, a couple episodes, maybe even three. We're gonna see, we're gonna keep going, keep this mindset as we finish out the city though. We really need to take care of all the needs of all the citizens. So here, as you saw, probably in one of the earlier time lapses, we did add a park area. And what I'm going to start doing in these videos is 
These type of areas that need a little bit more attention to detail, we don't do a ton of detailing in this one. We're gonna use those as filler for when we're waiting for the game to cycle. It's the way I used to play when I wasn't making videos and when I was just really loving city skylines. And I think we're gonna come get back to that and we can kind of have a mixture of everything that is basic education of city skylines and how to play it and how to maximize all the features as well as making the city look gorgeous and add the little details that we want. I forgot about the forest brush. A lot of the detailing that I've been doing is placing trees down one by one where I have a nice brush that does the mixture of trees that I wanted. So we kind of fill a lot of areas with that right here and finish some of the some of the detailing that we can do a lot quicker with using the tools that the game provides or not the game provides but the modding community has provided that we we tend to like. And so that's about it for this episode. We also add some services here to kind of Again, focus on the happiness of the citizens and to keep them happy, we'll keep the city growing, we'll keep the city thriving, and will allow us to expand as big as we want to without having a lot of issues in the city. And we're gonna keep an eye on that moving forward. So again, episode one of a change in direction, kind of, but also building the same pretty Lake Sockside city that I envisioned. And right here, you can see a view of it this is way too long into the series before we got to this point, and we're going to speed up the progress. We're going to start moving a lot faster, a lot more expansions more often than just detailing one block at a time. I think it makes for better videos. I think it makes me happier because look at that. The city's coming together finally how I envisioned it, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Again, I'm Socks Way Up. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll catch you on the next episode of Lake Sockside.